Hi, this is Chris from ASIC Software and welcome to the last video in this collections tutorial. In this video we're going to be looking at removing objects from the collection and also from the database. So there's a bit of change that's happened here. Um, I've set up just straight away just to tell you I've set up a little record, uh, a Waltfest conference, and we've got three speakers all assigned to that conference pretty standard stuff. The reason I've done that is because, as mentioned in the last video, in the real world you would probably not be creating um, your entities inside your controller. You would more likely um, be getting them straight from Doctrine, from your database. And so I'm not doing that 100% here, but I am sort of faking it. The reason I say I'm faking it is because I'm getting it, but I'm, I know it exists, so I'm sort of getting that exact record. And in the real world, you would probably have some logic in there to say, you know, if that record doesn't exist, then create it. Uh, don't just throw some crazy error or, you know, whatnot. Anyway, putting the result of that doctrine query into a conference variable. What this is here, if you've never seen that before, I don't know if this is just PHP Storm. It's like a type hint if I remove it um, when I do this. Uh, if I can type, then PHP Storm doesn't actually know what a conference is. Whereas if I put that in, then when I do that, it just gets all my methods and is nice. So yeah, if you've never seen that, that's what that's doing. Uh, you can put the full path in there, by the way, the full namespace path. Um, no need to though, but hey ho, digress. Okay, so now we get into the more sort of complicated stuff. This is just the same old form that you've seen a million times before in all these videos. Uh, but the, this is where things change up a little bit. And I, I've shamelessly stolen this from um, the Symphony documentation. So there's nothing like crazy going on here. But um, at the same time, you've got quite a messy controller when you're doing this. <coughs> Excuse me. And... I like to try and keep my controllers as thin as possible, uh, but in this case, this is the sort of best practice as it's in the documentation and yeah, I don't really like it. I think it's messy, it looks crazy and yeah, but hey ho, this is what we've got, so this is what we're going through. Um, their way of doing it is to create an original speaker. I say their way of doing it, I can't think of a better way of doing it, so I'm not slagging them off or anything, I'm just saying this is, this is it. Right, so we create this original speakers um, variable, which has got a new array collection so it's just empty but it's an array collection and then basically we go through the conference we get the speakers out of the conference the current conference and then we put them into this original speakers array collection all good so far right so if I just take off this debug and then just refresh so yeah we're not actually loading the page as such we're going straight to the debug um, you can see that it's got the three speakers in there. All right, that's important. Okay, so in the real world, let's just, you wouldn't see that. That just happens in the background. And then whatever, you've got this, you know, displayed as normal. And then we would normally submit it, right? So I'm going to submit it and let's just submit it now. Nothing's happening here because we've not removed or added anything so it's all good but it's still doing all this logic you just obviously don't see it but what not um, so but then it, once the form's submitted and it's valid we go back through this original speakers array collection and we check if the submitted conference so this is like the confusing bit here there's the form that's submitted there's that data which goes into this conference entity but then we've sort of, before the form was submitted, we've created this original speakers entity and taken out all the speakers from the conference before any changes were made and put them into this original speakers entity. So this might contain like three because that's as it was. And then we might go through here and remove them two. And now on the submit, conference only contains one. So that's, uh, that's where the confusion in this part comes across. Then you've got this kind of crazy thing, and I don't know if it's because like French speakers are um, used to sort of doing things like in in English, like <coughs> excuse me, we have like a different, um, you know, like the language that the way that we say stuff is sort of backwards compared to the way that Europeans say it. 
And I think that comes across, I've seen this like more and more in the symphony documentation. I think it might be a French thing or something. They always do like the if false equals and then do it backwards. And then I've always done it that way. I'm not sure which way is right. I guess that way is perhaps easier to read. But to me, it's like it reads wrong. So that's why I always do it the other way around. Um, hey, semantics, I guess. Anyway. So, yeah, that's the gist of what this is doing. It's saying if the submitted conference speakers contains the original speaker equals false. So if it doesn't contain that, like to make that completely difficult to understand, um, then remove the speaker. Right. And then there's a little bit of logic that's going on here. So that's standard stuff. And then we've added in here the original speaker. So. Yeah, let's just let's try and re-explain this a little bit better. So we removed the speaker from the conference because remember we're going to be saving off the conference. That's the important thing, right? We need to remember to save off the conference at the end, which is just how we've been doing it throughout. But then we also need to handle stuff with this original speaker. And what we're doing here is we're setting the conference that this original speaker that's now disappeared is related to to null, right? So this is going to involve a little change anyway. And then we're removing it. We're calling the remove um, doctrine uh, method. So we're actually deleting it from the database. Now you might not want to do that, um, but otherwise you're going to end up with an orphan in the database, um, which, excuse me, simply means that there's going to be a record in the database that's not related to anything. And if you've got no way of finding those records, you might just get like a polluted database. I mean, it's not crazy, but you know you don't really want that. Anyway, so um, yeah, we put in this. Original speaker, which remember, original speaker is just a type of speaker. So it's just an entity of the type speaker. We've called this set conference method and we've called null on it. Now, you might have looked through this and seen, you know, this is type hinted to uh, conference. Okay, so, but yet you're passing in a null. So you're going to get an error there straight away. Uh, so we have to remove the type pin and move the type pin inside. Well, let's not move the type in as such, but move the check for the type that we're passing in inside. And we're saying if conference is not an instance of conference, uh, this used to confuse the hell out of me as well when I was first started programming. It's like, what the hell? Why are you saying that twice? Um, if conference is not an instance of conference, if the variable conference is not an in instance of conference, and conference is not equal to null, then you know, throw the invalid argument exception and conference must be an instance of conference or null. Um, otherwise, cool. So that's basically what that's doing. That's that's how we allow nulls to be passed in. And Doctrine relies on this uh, sort of convention to you set a null and it knows then to remove the relationship. So that's, that's the gist of what's happening there. And then we can remove it safely. Otherwise, um, you might get some... I'm not sure actually you might get some like referential integrity errors where it's saying uh, this is related to that and you can't do that I don't know if that's just being super clean or whether that would do it anyway um, but yeah you best be explicit on stuff like that really and then simple stuff after that we're just persisting it off so nothing too crazy um, you can do whatever you want to do like in this case I'm just removing the record from the database uh, but you could also persist it, as I say, you're just going to end up with this orphaned record. So let's try that. Uh, where are we? This one? So we've saved, let's save that off. We should find that those records get deleted. Yep, so it's pulled back back in now. Um, these have disappeared. So yeah, that's basically that in a nutshell. Let's just remove that though and um, remove this speaker as well. In fact, let's just hack one in, just so we can see what's going on. Oops, no, it's going to be conference two. And I don't know any other Disney characters, so I'll just call this one Fred. And whatever, like I say, we're just hacking that in. So um, go back here, reload that up. And then this time we're going to delete Fred. So Fred's gone. And it should end up with a null in the database. So Fred shouldn't delete. He should become null. Yeah. So like I say, you end up with this sort of unconnected 
which you know, it might be fine. You know, you know, you might have a separate table of speakers, and Fred just doesn't happen to be speaking at this conference. But it's just something to be aware of. You know, there's there's options there, and there's never a right or wrong really in programming. It's what works in your situation. So just be aware that those different things can happen. And also, just one last thing to cover in the documentation, as it says, depending on how you've got your relationship set up so depending on how your entity relationship set up is configured you may not need to do this if you're doing many to many's i think you get away with not having this sort of crazy mess inside your controller you might not think it's a crazy mess but hell i do i think it's horrible uh, especially when you've got more than one field that you're removing um, you end up with these massive sort of loops here and you put them outside your control outside the action and god it gets messy it gets messy <laughs> anyway so that's that that's that's collections in a nutshell if you've got any questions or um whatnot feel free to either leave them in the comments get in touch with me it's chris a6 software that's a6 as in the number software.co.uk or just think of it like the road or the car whatever um yeah and the other thing is let me know what videos you want to cover that's always helpful i know um form validations are um possibly next up i would like to do a test driven development one also and yeah just get in touch with me like add me on google plus add me on linkedin it's really cool to get like messages